Good, Catherine. We're doing great. Keep going. You're doing. You're doing. You're doing amazing. Okay. Hey everyone, it's me, Catherine, and today I am here to bring you a TBR. Now, uh, this wasn't originally what I was going to be filming today. <laughs> My original video was gonna be. <laughs> It was gonna be about death. And considering this video is going up on the last day of June, <laughs> it was gonna be a pretty morbid end to Pride. <laughs> Happy Pride, everyone. Here's a video about death. So this morning while I was having my breakfast, um, I was watching Jessie from Bowties and Books do a sapphic recommendations video, plus an announcement for, a Okay, mushroom. For a sapphic readathon happening this Friday, July the second, um, and I was like, "Hey, why don't I? Considering this video is going up on the last day of Pride Month, why don't I just do a quick little TBR for that readathon that I'm going to definitely take part in on Friday? Probably, almost, almost definitely. I am going to be using some of the recommendations that Jessie gave. I do have a quick TBR that I just flew together, flew together, threw together, <laughs> unscribbed. So let's have a look. So I haven't really looked into too deep. I just hope that they're as sapphic as I'm hoping they're going to be. One of them is going to be a reread, actually. So let's just go through them, shall we? Obviously, I'm. it's going to be a 24-hour readathon. I'm not getting to all of these out. You know, I'll be surprised if I finish one. So let's start. The first one is a reread that I have on my little sapphic TBR list, and that is Labyrinth Lost by uh, Zoraida Cordova, which I originally read... What? 2017? Three? years ago now four years ago and I got a uh, Bruja born for Christmas and um, so I wanted to do a read of Labyrinth, L Labyrinth Lost just to familiarize myself re-familiarize myself with the characters because I think Bruja born is technically like a companion it's not a direct like sequel or anything but I do just want to like re-familiarize myself and there is a little I mean it's not focused on the romance in this but like that that really doesn't matter but we're following Alex who is a uh, bruja. At her death day celebration, Alex performs a spell to rid herself of her power because she hates, she hates having this magic, but it backfires and all her family like disappear and she goes journeying to get her family back with Nova, a friend from school. Who I believe she has a crush on, I think she has a crush on, and a, a boy who I think starts to fancy her it's like a little little, little v-shape little v-shape love triangle with that it's a triangle v little love v anyway there's a little there's a little there's a little like little, little little romance in there i'm good oh no no i'm glad i did this video to remind myself just how good i actually am at summarizing books this is great catherine no that's good anyway she goes on this journey with nova um her crush. I'm pretty sure it's, 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 if not implied, definitely spoken out loud in the writing of this book that she fancies Nova, her friend from school, um, who is a girl. <laughs> okay, next. Next we have The Gilda Stories by Jewel Gomez. Jewel. Jewel Gomez. Which I've had in my TBR. I think I put this in my TBR for October last year. Um, I've had this in here a while because it's about vampires, so I was like, vampires, October, Halloween, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's like very like scary per se, but I think they're like sexy vampires and sexy lesbian vampires. Yeah, it's under lesbian fiction. So <laughs> this was actually on Jessie's recommendations video, which reminded me that I also have this on my TBR. So I was like, you know what, get this in this TBR and we'll see. We'll see if I get to read it. We'll see. I mean, you, you never know. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have definitely happened. Then we have We Unleash the Merciless Storm, Let Reckoning Rain by Taylor K. Mejia, um, narrated by Kyla Garcia. Now, this is the second book in the We Set the Dark on Fire. Is that what it was called? I read this last year and really enjoyed it. Like, really enjoyed it. We Set the Dark on Fire takes place in sort of like a dystopian world. I think it's a dystopian world. I don't know if it's based on a real place. I don't know. Dystopian. And we're following Daniela. Um, in this world, the well-to-do, like, powerful men have two wives, a primera and a segunda, and Danny is the top primera at this school, and she gets married to one of the, the top, the top eligible bachelor. And Carmen 
is the second segunda of this and she uh, starts to fall in love with Carmen and they start to it's 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 beautiful I love it a lot um, and this is the sequel and it looks like we're following Carmen and I I'm excited to get to it so actually I think this one's probably going to be probably near the top of the, my TBR I might actually that might, might, might actually be the one I get to Next we have Cryer's War, which I think made the rounds like a little while ago. I say a little while ago, time has been very weird for me. I guess it's been weird for everybody lately, so I don't know, I don't remember how long ago people were talking about this. If people even still are, but it is. It's about an impossible love between two girls, one human, one maid, whose romance could be the beginning of a revolution. Did I tell you, did I say it was by Nina Varela? So basically this is about like robots, AI, Androids that are royal that that, that that rule bent the human race they were so like they like rose up took over like you know brought the humans down and are now ruling and we have a romance between Ayla Isla I'll find out when I listen listen to this do I have yeah listen to this <laughs> who is a human servant rising in the ranks of the house of the sovereign dreams of avenging her family's death by killing the sovereign's daughter lady crier and then we have crier was made to be beautiful flawless and to carry on her father's legacy but that was before her betrothal to the enigmatic sire Keenock. before she discovered her father isn't the benevolent king she once admired and most importantly before she met Ayla Ayla Ayla. Now with growing human unrest across the land, pressures from a foreign queen and an evil new leader on the rise, Crya and Ayla find there may be only one path to love. War. Sounds very exciting. So I, I've heard mixed things I think about it. Like people are like, oh it's, it's like it's not as good as people were hoping but it's like it's okay, it's not bad. Then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which I was very popular on booktube like a while ago. I am late, to, as always, I'm late to most parties. Um, so I don't buy Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I need to get better at remembering to tell you who, who the books are by. <laughs> mm. So this is about a woman who's giving like an old actress, right? She's like coming to the end of her life, I think, and she's giving an interview to this woman and telling her about her husband's and also this love she had with this lady back in the day. So that's... That's that. Then we have Once Goes to Twice Shy, a Reluctant Royals novella by Alyssa Cole. Now, I have not read anything in the Reluctant Royals, uh, but this novella is... While her boss, the prince, was busy wooing his betrothed, Lycotzi... Lycotzi? Lycotzi. Shit. Uh, is this audio? Is this audio? It's audio. Oh, good. It can teach me how to pronounce things. Had her own love affair after swiping right on a dating app, but her romance had ended in heartbreak, and now, back in NYC again, she's, she's determined to rediscover her joy. So, of course, she runs into the woman who broke her heart. So, it's only a novella, so it's quite short, so I might I might get to this. I mean, how long is the audiobook? It's three hours and 20 minutes, so it's gonna be quite short, fairly short. And, like, I've heard it's, like, it's like fun, right? It's fun. It's good. It's... With a fun, sexy romance, fun, it's in the tagline of the description, a fun, sexy romance novella in the Reluctant Royals series. So, I don't think I need to have read the Reluctant Royals. I mean, they obviously re would redu re reduce me, reduce me, fucking hell, Catherine. <laughs> Introduce me to Likotsi. Likotsi? Likotsi? We'll see. So we've got next, we've got The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics, Feminine Pursuits by Olivia Waite. Right, so... This is like a set, when is this set? Like it's, a, it looks, they're wearing like fancy dresses. So I don't know when this is set. It doesn't give me historical romance. Cute and sweet and a lovely queer historical romance. Thank you, reviewer. This, oh God, I can't remember who I saw talking about this, but I, I when they described it, I was like, mm, this sounds kind of like, I would be interested in that. So we've got Lucy who has just watched her ex-lover get married. And then she receives a letter from the Countess of Moth looking for someone to translate a groundbreaking French astronomy text. So off she goes to this Countess's London home and I guess, I guess romance ensues. It's gonna be good. I don't read much any historical romance really. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to get into this. Translating, like I love fucking love languages. So like this, the, this, like, this, this just sounds right up my street. Then we have You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This also made the rounds on booktube. Everyone was like saying it's really cute, really cool. It's about this, um, a girl called... 
Wallflower Liz. Oh, she's a wallflower. I was like, that can't that can't be her first name, Liz. <laughs> So following Liz, who is, uh, she's trying to get a scholarship to college, but the financial aid she was counting on unexpectedly falls through. There is, she, there is like prize money that you win, like the prom queen and king get, because this town takes their proms very seriously, apparently. So she's determined to win this prom, win this, be crowned prom queen. But then she falls in love with her competition and like, I'm all about that. I'm hoping for cute, I'm hoping for fun, I am looking forward to that. And we have Patsy by Nicole Dennis Ben. Now this has been on my TBR for a while. I did not realise it had like sapphic elements to it, but I heard Jessie talking about this like last year. So I added it to my TBR and now it was in their recommendations video. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> Okay, Patsy yearns to escape the beautiful but impoverished Jamaican town where she was raised for a new life in New York and the chance to start afresh. Above all, she hopes to be reunited with her oldest friend, Cicely, and to rekindle their young love. Oh, okay, okay. She must leave, but spreading her wings will come at a price. She must leave her five-year-old daughter, True, behind and Patsy is soon confronted by the stark reality of life as an undocumented migrant in a hostile city. This sounds like it's going to be quite heavy, but... I, I trust that it's going to be good, uh, so we'll see. It's on there. Will I, will I get to it on Friday? Who knows? Then we have Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This, I, this is, this is girls on island thrillers, spine tingly novel about three teenage girls who face off against an insidious monster that preys upon young women. Sounds exciting. Um, I'm going to assume there's some, there's some possible little bit of romance in there, like a little bit of... I mean, this was also on Jessie's recommendation list, so we'll see. And then finally, <laughs> finally, we have The Vanished Birds by Simon. Simon. Shit. Right. Just, just bear with me, like, because I, I, Simon. Oh, Jimene. Jimene? Jimene? Jim oh, si Simon Jimenez. Okay, so it's Simon Jimenez. Jimenez. I'm judging this on the katakana, okay? I'm reading this in katakana. You can't see that. I have my phone in Japanese. Um, and if I scroll down, I will get all the English, like, results. Uh, but the first result is always in Japanese. So I'm judging this based on the katakana. I hope they haven't let me down. So it is Simon. Simon Jimenez. Simon Jimenez. Right, The Vanished Birds. Anyway, anyway, this is a space opera. Oh, it's a must for fans of Becky Chambers. I love Becky Chambers. That reminds me, I need to read the next Becky Chambers. I've not read that. And Alistair Reynolds, I don't know who that is. <clears throat> Nia is a woman out of place and outside of time. Decades of travel through the stars are condensed into mere months for her, though the years continue to march steadily onward for everyone she has ever known. The captain of her transport ship contracted to, to the Umbrai Corporation. She lives only for the next paycheck until the day she meets a mysterious boy fallen from the sky. A boy broken by his past and hunted by his present, for he is one of the few born with the gift of the jaunt. The ability to travel instantly anywhere in the universe, an ability that threatens the vice-like control of the settled worlds by corporations such as Umbrai, Fumiko Nakajima, the great scientist responsible for the design of bird-like stations that Umbrai uses to control vast tracts of space, has been searching for one such as he for a thousand years. Together they set out to protect the boy, a journey that will cross the decades and light years all the way out to the fringes of settled space where the laws of civilization do not apply and they will have only each other to rely on. You no, know, that sounds really good. Oh no, okay, no, I think I'm gonna read this one. No, this sounds really cool. Oh, I was like, it was on Jesse's recommendation list, so like I just made a list, find out which ones were on scripts, which ones were in my library. None were in my library because my library is terrible uh, for books that are, mm, mm, are, that make the rounds on booktube. Like any of the books I wanna read, my library not so great for that. And from what I can see, there is no real way to um, recommend books for them to buy, which is, not helpful but yeah so that is <laughs> my gonna be that's, that's my tbr for friday obviously i'm not planning to read all of them these are just my options for what i'm gonna read friday i was definitely gonna read we 
unleashed the the second the Taylor K. Mejia one, the second book in the Weed Set the Dark on Fire. Uh, it was that was definitely gonna be at the top, but that vanished bird sounds, sounds so good. So I think I might that one might be at the top. But yeah, that is it. <laughs> so that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to want to participate in this sapphic readathon on Friday. It's taking place on Friday, July the 2nd. I will link the the sapphic recommendations video. It's only one video, sapphic recommendations and the sapphic readathon announcement that Jesse did. I will link their, their, that video and their channel in the description. There's also a couple of co-hosts, um, Kevin from the Irish Reader and Jan, but I can't, it's Jan, Jan, ooh, They'll be linked in the description, but yeah, no, go check out the announcement video and the recommendations because there are some other um, books on there that they recommended that I have not got here because <sighs> scribbed and some that I've read, uh, one one that I've read already. But yeah, no, go go do that and let me know what you're planning to read if you're planning to take part. I'm excited because I haven't done a readathon in a long time and a 24 hour one seems like nice and simple, nothing too complicated and my battery, my battery, my camera is about to like cut me off because I'm coming to the end of the length that it can allow in one go. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. All my socials will be linked in the description below. Also, if you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I also, I also have my coffee, coffee, coffee. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, I have that linked in the description as well. Until then, take care. I hope you have a lovely week, rest of your day, wherever you are, and I will hopefully see you soon. Bye. <laughs> ah, there we go.